take a look at that corrector plate. Now, take a look around the rest of the observatory. This was the dewiest night that I have seen this year and maybe in many years. Humidity hit 99% within an hour after astronomical dark, and the temperature dropped to within 0.1 degrees Celsius of the dew point. Now, dew will begin to form on optics if the temperature drops within 3 degrees Celsius of the dew point, so this was bad. I mean, look at this. There was so much dew that it was like a light rain had fallen all through the night. And yet, at the crack of dawn, here's the corrector plate on the telescope. For those who may not already be aware, high aperture, large body telescopes, especially telescopes like Maxitos and schmidt cassegrains which have that corrector plate in front, are notorious for dew buildup. The reason being, those large bodies and their large corrector plates or lenses can be very difficult to keep adequately warm. At least that's how the story goes, right? It is apparently so difficult that many companies build shields or dew shields to put over the fronts of the bodies which help mitigate air movement or capture air or in some way or another overall keep dew off the corrector plates and, and lenses on front of these telescope bodies. But the question is, are dew shields necessary? You know, I made a video on the three-stage dew prevention process that I had put together for my telescope, which was, in most respects, very successful. I made a video on that about a year ago. Now, I say it was, in most respects, very successful because it kept dew off 100% of the time, but it had a weakness. That enormous dew shield was a big wind sail sitting on the front of the optical tube. Now, I live on a mountain at one of the highest points in Nova Scotia. And these aren't big mountains, they're not like the Himalayas or the Rocky Mountains or anything, but nonetheless, it's high enough up that if there are going to be night breezes, we will get them. And given that this province is by and large an island that sticks wet in the ocean, and there's a lot of ocean just a few miles to the east and the west of me, Night winds are a very frequent thing. Sometimes we get dead still nights and those are nice. Most clear nights, winds are blowing around seven to eight kilometers per hour. That's about four or five miles per hour or roughly the same in knots. But we can easily get nights where the wind is blowing a steady 15 to 25 kilometers per hour all through the night. And what I have found is if the dew shield is on and the wind is blowing more than seven or eight kilometers per hour, then that brings up my telescope's guiding from a reliable 0.6 to 0.8 total error up to about 1.2 to 1.4. I can still live with that, but if the wind gets any higher at all, it's gonna drive it up to 1.9, 2.0, and at, once it gets over 1.49, I'm no longer interested in the data. It's just not good enough given the high focal lengths that I like to shoot at. So a while back, I decided to take the dew shield off the telescope and see what happened. I was very wary about doing this. Clear nights are precious, as every astrophotographer knows, and the thought of wasting a good clear night to allow such a simple preventable problem as dew to collect on the corrector plate, oh, it just, it just rubbed me wrong. And you know what? The first night, the experiment did not work out. It didn't work out because I have a Pegasus Astro power box, which is a good power box, I'm not knocking the power box, but I was using it to do aggression feature. And I had it set for a very high amount, seven or eight, because I wasn't sure how it would work out without the dew shield. This was significantly higher than I usually operate the dew heaters at. Usually I run auto dew aggression at just two or three when the dew shield is on the SCT. This did in fact keep the dew off the corrector plate even without the dew shield, but I ended up with pinched stars. So with schmidt cassegrain telescopes, they have that huge corrector plate in front and it's a dew magnet. This dew can be prevented by putting a dew heater ring. That's like a, a dew strap that you would put on the optical tube of something like a refractor, except it, it attaches directly to the corrector plate right around the rim. And the purpose of the dew heater ring is to apply heat directly to the corrector plate so the natural conductivity of the glass can move the heat over the entire corrector plate. Dew heater rings are very effective for keeping dew off corrector plates, but if a little too much amperage is given to the dew heater ring, it will overheat the corrector plate a little bit, and that will cause optical pinching. This optical pinching pinches the stars. It causes them to have spikes, like you would see with a, with a Newtonian telescope, but I personally think the spikes in Newtonian telescopes look beautiful, but they don't look great when they happen in a Schmidt-Cassegrain telescope because you either get one-sided spikes or you get 
two pointed spikes with each spike pointing in opposite directions and the two pointed spikes don't look good in my opinion but their appearance is made even worse because they tend to be lopsided with one spike much longer than the other. So while using dew heater rings is very effective for keeping dew off the corrector plate, the trick with using them is to apply just enough heat and no more. Minimal power really. I usually run it at only 20% power, which puts about 0.2 to 0.4 amps on the ring. The next night was also clear, so I decided to take another chance and try something else. Now, Pegasus Astro power boxes have an automatic dew monitoring feature. They monitor the amount of dew and it's supposed to apply power to your dew heater belts and dew rings according to how much humidity is in the air. The idea being to apply just enough power to keep the optics warm. But this has a tremendous disadvantage in that it applies equal power to all connected dew heaters. And by the way, Pegasus Astro, if you're watching this, I like the automatic dew aggression feature, or at least the idea of it but you really need to provide independent aggression controls for the various dew heater channels because not every dew heater on a telescope needs the same amount of power. On telescopes like Maxitos and schmidt cassegrains the dew heater rings on the corrector plate need far less power than the dew heater belts on the body. So back to everybody else. I turned off the auto dew feature and this allowed me to independently control the power to each discrete dew heater power channel. It was going to be another night of very heavy dew, so I set the dew heater ring for 25% and the dew heater belt, which wraps around the optical tube near the corrector plate, for 80%. The dew heater ring conveys heat directly to the corrector plate, so the natural conductivity of the glass can move the heat around and keep the dew off the glass. And the dew heater belt applies heat directly to the optical tube, the goal being to heat the air within the optical tube assembly. With that set, I went to bed and called it a night. And the next morning, you know what? No dew on the corrector plate and no pinch stars. This has led me to conclude that some of the things that I have learned about dew management were wrong and I wanted to share that with you. My own experiments with dew management have led me to the conclusion that it's very possible to keep dew entirely off of most models of telescopes without dew shields. And I know that sounds crazy. If you've been in astrophotography for a while, then you've probably seen reviews of various models of telescopes where they were criticized for a lack of adequate dew shielding. And you may have heard nightmare stories about how hard it is to keep dew off of Maxitoff telescopes, which are usually used for planetary photography, and the persons who are using them becoming so desperate in their battles with dew that they end up standing around their telescopes with hair dryers. And of course, there are the endless nightmare stories about how difficult it is to keep dew off of schmidt cassegrain telescopes and similar designs due to their large bodies. But I've been experimenting with leaving the dew shield off for months now, and I'm not having problems with dew. And where I live can be very dewy during the warm months. Nights will often hit 99% humidity, and usually the temperature will drop to very close to the dew point. And then occasionally, especially toward autumn, we can get really wild nights like the ones that I've had the last few nights, where the humidity is pushing 99%. And the ambient temperature was sitting right at the dew point within an hour or two after astronomical dark. And still, I can easily manage to keep the dew off the SCT without a dew shield. And this is important because dew shields are terrible for guiding. They are essentially big sails on the telescope's body, and any breeze that happens during the night is going to exert substantial force on them, which will degrade your guiding. Happily though, it seems that dew shields are by and large unnecessary. With or without a dew shield, what I found to be the key for preventing dew is just adequate heating. I think astrophotography can be so expensive that many of us just see dew heaters as one more expense we would rather not have to bother with, and so we take a minimalist approach to dew heaters. But if you live in a dew prone area, my advice would be go overboard a little bit. Now that doesn't mean you have to line your OTA from front to back with dew heaters. But it does mean it's probably worth your while to make sure that you have put an adequate amount of dew heaters on your OTA. For short fat telescope models like schmidt cassegrains and Maxitoffs, at least two dew heaters. That's what I'm presently using on my 203mm Celestron, otherwise known as the Celestron C8, not the Edge model. The dew heater belt is placed on the OTA a couple inches behind the corrector plate, and its job is to warm the air within the telescope body, the OTA. And there is a second dew heater, the dew heater ring, which is placed directly on the corrector plate. And its job is to apply heat directly to the corrector plate where dew will build up, using the natural heat conductivity of glass to circulate the heat. These heaters 
don't have to be super effective. In other words, they don't have to make the equipment warm. They just have to keep the front optic higher than three degrees Celsius over the dew point. So what I'm saying is if you're having trouble with dew, rather than worrying about a bigger dew shield, perhaps get another dew heater, maybe two. Consider where you place them on your OTA and make sure they're adequately powered. And for those of us who live in wind prone areas, this is especially important because dew shields are wind sails. And as noted, any movement of the air can exert a substantial force on them. Get even a mild breeze on a telescope with a large dew shield on it, and it can degrade your guiding to the point the information is unusable. In fact, in my own experiments, I have found wind on the dew shield to be the single biggest contributing factor to poor guiding. And a final point, whatever power source that you get to control your dew heaters, be sure that it gives you independent control of each discrete heater. Depending on your model of telescope and the necessity of dew heater placement, different dew heaters will need different amounts of power. My SCC telescope is a great example for this, where a lot more power is needed on the dew heater strap on the OTA because its job is to warm the relatively large amount of air within the OTA, the optical tube assembly or telescope main body. But the dew heater ring sits directly on the corrector plate and only needs a little power to adequately warm the corrector plate to keep dew off. And as just mentioned, applying a little too much power could pinch the optics. But these two different dew heaters have very different power needs, requiring a power supply offering two different channels to manage them separately. Finally, since different telescope models and different environmental circumstances create different heating needs, you should take careful notes on the amount of power needed for any given situation. For example, my own notes with my SET have taught me that on nights when the humidity is expected to be above 50%, which around here is almost every warm night, but the temperature is expected to remain above the dew point, it's nonetheless a good idea to have a little power on the dew heaters just in case things change after I go to bed. There really are a few things worse in astrophotography than waking up in the morning to discover your subs were ruined from a problem so preventable as dew build up on the front of the telescope. So I'll use minimal settings. 50% on the dew heater strap and 20% on the dew heater ring. That way, if things get a little worse through the night, I won't end up waking up in the morning to find ruined images because the corrector plate was dewed over. If the humidity is running up to 80% and the temperatures are expected to drop down to anywhere within the dew point during the night, I'll set the dew heater strap for 60% and the dew heater ring will remain at 20%. That's always been enough to keep any dew off during such conditions. If the humidity during the night is expected to go up to 95%, and the temperature to get anywhere within the dew point, I'll set the dew heater strap for 60% and the dew heater ring for 25%. And if the ambient humidity is expected to get over 95% during the night, and there is even the remotest chance the temperature will fall anywhere near the dew point, then I'll set the dew heater strap at 80% and the dew heater ring at 25%. I reached all these settings by keeping notes on simple trial and error. And this keeps due off without a deal shield 100% of the time. I still can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm no longer a fan of dew shields. I think they should be avoided if at all possible. They help, and if you have one, you'll need less power to your dew heaters, whatever kinds of dew heaters you're using, but they pose perhaps the single biggest risk to good guiding. And if even a modest breeze kicks up during the night, even a very good quality mount carrying well below its rated capacity, like mine, can suffer substantial guiding degradation. But I think it's fine to be without a dew shield because my own experiments have indicated that even if the humidity gets to be very high, you can safely take the dew shield off, so long as you have adequate and well thought out placements of dew heaters and sufficient power to operate them. In fact, I find myself avoiding use of the dew shield as often as possible now. When I do use it, it's mainly because I live in the backwoods, and if I'm getting into a period of time where there's a lot of insect activity, such as spiders are wanting to make a lot of webs, or there's a lot of bird activity, and I'm worried about droppings ending up on the corrector plate, the dew shield there is mainly to guard against that. But otherwise, I just keep the dew shield off the telescope, because night breezes can kick up anytime. In fact, last night, that's what happened. I started shooting last night at 9 p.m. in perfect conditions, but around 1 a.m., heavy 25 km per hour winds kicked up and there were frequent gusts that were far heavier and that lasted for about two hours. And in spite of those highly adverse conditions, the guiding was good. But had there been a big dew shield on the telescope in those conditions, the resulting information would have been worthless. So, final conclusion, with adequate dew heaters, dew shields just aren't necessary. 
And given the way they can adversely affect guiding in any kind of breeze, you may be better off without them. I'd love your opinions on this. Maybe you've had different experiences, though I can hardly imagine how your dew conditions might have been worse than mine when we're talking about humidity at 99% and the temperature sitting right at the dew point through the night. As always, thanks for watching, and I wish you dew-free optics. Now, get out there and shoot the sky.